Hello and welcome to the National Science Week documentary series from Research to Reality. I'm Jeff Garrett and I have the privilege of being Chief Scientist here in Queensland. Over the next eight weeks we'll be showcasing fascinating Queensland-based science and technology and their transformation, or translation if you like, from idea or research project through to real products and services that generate new businesses, new jobs and growth. We'll also introduce you to some of Queensland's top scientists, technologists and entrepreneurs. In our first two episodes, we profile two fantastic Queensland companies. Both companies have unique products with significant intellectual property. To kick off, what do we mean by the term intellectual property, or IP? Well, your IP represents knowledge that is owned by you. It can be an invention or simply the practical application of a really good idea. It's important because having IP can often be the edge which helps you to be more successful. World markets are, of course, extremely competitive, so protecting your IP can often be essential. Making research a reality is often about harvesting innovation. What well, I like to think of ideas successfully applied. Interestingly, many businesses tend to go through similar stages on their journey. These can last a few days or perhaps a few years or decades with each business progressing in its own unique time frame. Our two companies are at different stages in their business development. Before we introduce the first one, let's have a quick look at the typical stages in a common business life cycle. Stage one is all about assessing the opportunity. Where's the business out there? In stage two, it's time to get out and start the business. Stage three is all about growing and becoming profitable. By stage four, the business might have matured and become more routine. But then stage five, the business is serious, seriously looking about expanding. Later stages six and seven are typically an either or. Either there's a decline that threatens the firm's ongoing viability, which can happen slowly, or a very sudden bust. Or there's an opportunity for a company to transform into the next phase. And you can either cash out, let someone else to develop this opportunity, or do so yourself. So in a nutshell, these are the sort of stages we might see in a typical business life cycle. Tonight we're focusing on client architectural, which is in the maturity phase. Rowan Gilmore, the CEO of the Australian Institute for Commercialisation, caught up with Danny Klein and his team at their factory in Slacks Creek. I trust you'll enjoy this first episode of From Research to Reality. I'm here at Klein Architectural, south of Brisbane, and I'm about to meet the owner behind a pretty unique business. Klein Architectural is a family-owned business whose founder and CEO, Danny Klein, has over 30 years' experience in producing fine metalwork. Klein Architectural is a great example of a company going through the maturity phase of its business. It had been employing about 20 people and turning over around $20 million in revenue per year. Then, suddenly things changed. The global financial crisis struck and Danny and his team hit a brick wall. Substantial Ford orders were cancelled and Danny had to lay some of his staff off. We had six months work booked up uh, to practically zero over the Christmas period when the GFC really started biting. And uh, we had 20 staff, 20 tradies uh, working hard and in a short space of five months, I went down to four. Not content to just sit around, Danny invented a whole new product called the Klein Architectural Grab Rail, or the CAG for short, a stainless steel handrail, but with a difference. So Rowan, yeah, if you want to just grab one, you'll feel the difference in the movement down on the grip. So this one here is a painted version, specifically designed for the mining sector. Um, that's our health uh, one, which is designed for health, and that's the current railing that's available in the marketplace which is a uh, import mm. so you'll feel a difference immediately there especially if you grab that with weight there's an immediate difference mm. what makes the product unique is that there is nothing like it in the world um, today we've had Cullen's uh, patent people search there's not a product like it in the world as, as we speak at the minute um, and the product provides 80% um, better grip so it increases the safety factor on any climbing incline use for a ladder or a handrail or grab rail. What, what makes it non-slip? The pattern that we have in, in the CAG system which has been designed to fit every size hand that was where the difficulty of the design was um, finding the right access uh, points to fit every size hand and which it does. So the benefits are with the product is safety, really. Although Klein is still in the early stages of raising awareness with potential customers about the CAG, 
Danny is already receiving inquiries about it, particularly from the mining industry. I caught up with Tim Haight, founder of NLT Australia, a subsidiary of NL Technologies from Canada. NLT specialises in the installation of electronic communications in mine sites. When Tim saw the CAG, he was immediately interested in its potential for use in the mining sector. So what led you to decide to uh, work together with Klein and how's the collaboration going? Uh, I've, I've actually met Danny at a, uh, well I've met his brother Glenn at an Enterprise Connect uh, session oh, uh, some non months back and we just got talking about the product. Um, our business comes out of a safety business, Levitt Safety out of Canada, it's a large family owned business and they've got a lot of interest in products like this and I saw uh, the Levitts being very interested in taking this product in fact uh, to the market over in Canada. Uh, so I was, I was talking to Glenn about that and then I got talking to Danny and, uh, and, and it kind of evolved from there. I, uh, and I saw some uses for it here and I just said to him, look at I think I can probably help you out uh, into this market. Going back to basics, what are the main factors that make Klein Architectural different from other stainless steel fabricators? When we started Klein Architectural we wanted to be uh, a little bit different in the marketplace. Um, we wanted to express um, custom design and we also wanted to uh, cater for standard commercial needs. Who are your first clients? Oh, um, this is an interesting story. This is, uh, our first client was a company by the name of HPM and we did uh, 300 uh, little face plates light, for light switches out of stainless steel and I had no tools, <clears throat> so I assembled the whole family, my daughter-in-law, my uh, nieces and nephews and family, and we together uh, filled out that purchase order and got the job done. And mind you, with bread and butter knives, that's what we used. <laughs> Unbelievable, but very true. 